Welcome the Purdue of today to the eyes of the Purdue cameraman. You're always welcome to visit campus and I hope now you will share with me some of the highlights of the past year of growth and development at your university. The Purdue University Symphony Band has the honor of being the first college band to appear on stage at the Radio City Music Hall. three-week performance wins praise from the critics and results in their being held over for five additional weeks. The day is gray and overcast in Bloomington, and the game lacks the usual excitement. Late in the fourth quarter, Indiana recovers a Purdue fumble and drives for a touchdown. With three minutes remaining, Purdue trails 15 to 14. Gordon Teeter takes the kickoff. He finds a hole in the defense and streaks to the Indiana 24. On the first play from scrimmage, Ron DeGravio fades back to pass and hits Randy Manier over the middle. In just 27 seconds, Purdue regains the lead. The old oaken bucket returns to Purdue for the 15th time in 16 years and the Boilermakers finish the season tied for third in the Big Ten. In Big Ten basketball, Purdue also ends the season tied for third. One of the reasons for their good showing is number 42, Dave Shellhouse. As a sophomore, Dave is named to the all-conference team and awarded honorable mention All-American. His 589 points is second highest in the Big Ten for 1964. It's also second highest in the Purdue record books. Quite obviously, Dave is named most valuable player. And good news for Boilermaker fans, he has two more seasons at Purdue. High-rise construction is bringing a change to the traditional Purdue skyline. The Krannert Graduate School of Industrial Administration takes shape south of the Memorial Union. This structure, along with the Graduate House, forms a unique complex for advanced study. Just east of the Union, a six-story parking garage is being built in an effort to relieve the parking problem. New undergraduate housing is always needed. This year, construction begins on an eight-story H hall for women. Just north of the Executive Mall, the new Civil Engineering Building is already occupied, although interior construction will continue over a period of 10 years. On the northwest corner of the campus, the Slater Center for the Performing Arts 
a gift of alumni Dr. and Mrs. R. Game Slater, adds an architectural accent. Even ross Stadium undergoes major changes as the playing field is lowered eight feet and the seating capacity increased to 60,000. Future plans call for the completion of the closed end of the stadium and the installation of a new scoreboard. Dr. Gerald R. McLean was appointed head of Purdue's outstanding Division of Mathematical Sciences, a post temporarily held by Dr. William R. Fuller. In his new role, Dr. McLean will see the division move into a new building on the site of old Purdue Hall. Having one of the finest math departments in the nation, Purdue's program covers all forms of mathematics. The Computer Science Center, an integral part of the modern mathematics program, gives students practical experience in addition to classroom theory. From key punch to computer to answer sheet, the average problem is solved in a matter of seconds. One of the dominant problems of engineering is the randomness of nature. This uncertainty is a major obstacle in the design of many structures and systems. The Stochastics Laboratory of the School of Aeronautics, Astronautics, and Engineering Sciences has one of the most complete university facilities for seeking methods of treating this uncertainty. Using an electrodynamic shaker, they subject model structures to random stress and reduce the results to precise mathematical relationships. These two troposcatter antennas on the roof of the electrical engineering building give but a hint of their importance in a new research project. Radio waves beamed over long distances must pass through the troposphere, which tends to weaken the signal. Purdue engineers are attempting to design composite signals that will continually optimize themselves and correct for disturbances in the channel. The results will be better reception and more accurate interpretation of signals, a particularly vital factor in this space age. Agricultural engineers at Purdue are using artificial soil for testing the traction of tires under various conditions. Since the tests are performed indoors, the soil bed can be prepared to a desired compactness and its condition exactly recreated at a later date. Different types of tires in varying combinations and under varying weight loads are tested and the data recorded electronically. Another step toward the development of better farm equipment. Although this colt walks with a normal gait, just one year ago he was treated in the Purdue School of Veterinary Science and Medicine for a malformation of the right front leg. An x-ray shows the abnormal condition caused by an unequal development of the epiphysis, a growth center in the bone. To correct it, the growth of the normal side is arrested by stapling, and the other side given the opportunity to catch up, a process which can take as long as five months. When the final degree of correction has been achieved, the staples are removed. Only recently have such developments in orthopedic surgery at Purdue enabled veterinary surgeons to correct this condition. A student's life necessarily centers around his program of study, but teamwork and leadership must be developed outside the classroom. The old master's program lets students benefit from the experience of men who are leaders in their field. Claude Wickard, member of the Purdue Board of Trustees, and alumnus Dwight Waite are among the several business and professional people chosen to lead in formal group discussions. Varied and experienced answers are found for those all-important questions. Convention time at Purdue. Members of the Purduvian party swing into action. Signs, parades, all the color of a real political campaign. The beaver, this year's mascot, is an appropriate symbol for the hard pace of the convention. Senator Thruston Morton delivers a stimulating keynote address. Nomination speeches and their respective demonstrations fill the afternoon session.
Political maneuvers continue through two ballots, and delegates anxiously await the result of the third. When the announcement finally comes, Lyndon B. Johnson gets the nod. Hubert Humphrey is quickly chosen as running mate. Though the efforts of the campaign end with the convention, the effects are carried on in the minds of the delegates. Each in his own way has been given the practical education of politics in action. Purdue is proud of its alumni association, one of the most active in the Big Ten. The importance these alumni attach to education is reflected in their support of the Alumni Scholarship Foundation. In 1963, the generosity of these alumni made it possible for 700 students to continue their education at Purdue. Cordy Hall, executive director of the Scholarship Foundation, works closely with Joe Rudolph, executive secretary of the Alumni Association, in coordinating the activities of their respective offices. May Chen, as managing editor of the Purdue Alumnus, supervises the publication of the main link between the alumni and the university. The magazine, begun in 1914 as the official publication of the Alumni Association, is now celebrating its 50th year, reaching alumni around the world. Keeping accurate records and current addresses on these alumni is the task of the Alumni Address Office, under the direction of Mrs. Freshour and Mr. Chapman. All correspondence, including the alumnus, is mailed from here, and incoming information pertaining to alumni is promptly recorded. The new card filing system, recently installed here and in the Scholarship Foundation offices, makes the records of any one individual available at the push of a button. As manager of alumni public relations, Eth Ball works with the address office in coordinating class reunions, locating missing alums, and serving as editor-in-chief of the Purdue alumnus. But of the hundreds of mailings from this office, the most eagerly awaited is the announcement of Gala Week. Registration provides the first opportunity for the returning Gala grads to greet former friends. Dr. Charles Crampton registers from the class of 1891, the earliest class to be represented. The class of 1914 celebrates its 50th anniversary, and members are quick to renew old friendships and catch up on the events of the intervening years. Many reminisce about their college days and remember the water tank, the scene of the then traditional freshman sophomore tank scrap. The tank still stands on Salisbury Street, protected from the weather by a new coat of paint and from enterprising undergraduates by a chain link fence. Tours of the campus are popular and the many changes since those fondly recalled good old days provide plenty to look at. The wait for the bus presents just another opportunity to visit with former classmates. The weather is perfect for the parade of classes as the returning alumni march to the mall to pay their respects at the grave of John Perdue. The class of 1939 places the wreath, and all pause to remember the man who gave this great university its beginning.
the Purdue Glee Club's third European tour includes visits to 12 countries. Highlight, however, is their reunion with the Obernkirchen Children's Choir, who gave them the affectionate name of the American Meistersingers, a name which has now become a part of their official title. 